Hi guys. I just rode my bike to Fort Creek. Do you see where that guy down the hill is riding? I came that way and I came up this hill. And this is the first time in my whole life that I made it up the hill without having to get off my bike. So I rode over to that rock and I got off the bike so I could take a picture and a short video. I did have to take my Ventolin when I got to the top though. Cause uh, my asthma, that was really hard on my asthma. So, but I did it. Now here comes this guy, watch how easy he's gonna do it. And I can't stand up on my bike because it's a crank forward bike, so I can't get that extra momentum. So, but it's not easy. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but it's pretty steep. So, yeah. All right, I'm gonna catch my breath and keep going. I've got several more hills to go. I'm not gonna make it up those big ones though. This is Fort Creek. And uh, the trails go quite a ways down there on both sides. But I'm taking this side because it's the paved trail for bikes. And the other side's the uh, not paved trail for walking and dogs. So and I used to get lost in that side all the time when I was younger. I mean, I think my cousin and I were on that side for about 10 hours one time. So, yeah. And the only way we could find our way back to the road was to go right down by the creek. And just kind of follow the creek back. And this wasn't really here before. It wasn't as built up as it is now. So yeah. All right. And my house is about a, a few kilometers from here. I've already taken my bike from my house to here. And from this point all the way around, it should be about a 25 kilometer ride if I do the whole thing. But I don't know if I'll do the whole thing because I don't have a map. So the trail doesn't the trail once I hit on the roads. But I'm gonna give it a try. We'll see how it goes and see how the weather and the mosquitoes are. All right. Okay guys, so I am basically a wimp and I'm taking my, my bike for a walk today because I can't make it up the steep hills and I also can't make it down this, the hills because I'm afraid of going too fast. Because the only time I ever needed stitches was when I fell off my bike going down a hill. And uh, so I've been walking down this hill <laughs> we still have a little bit ways to go. And there was a steep hill sign part way down the hill, not even at the beginning of the hill, so I don't know if there's gonna be another steep hill at the end, around the corner or what, but it sure is pretty. All right, the other section of the trail is better for me so far. Maybe next year I won't be such a wimp, but this year I definitely am. Okay, so my bike just walked down and then up a huge hill. So far, other than the first maybe three kilometers on the way to this trail, I've just been walking and I'm exhausted and people might find my body dead here one day. <laughs> and uh, I'm down a hundred pounds and I still can't do these hills. And well, to be frank, I probably never, unless I get very brave and invest heavily in shoulder and knee pads or no elbow and knee pads, I probably won't ever go down the hills that are big because I, I'm really afraid to go down the hills, but I'm just sitting on this nice flat rock catching my breath and uh, I'm just my breath is actually okay. My legs are okay, but my whole body is just shaking Ever since I rode up the very first hill and I was so proud that I rode it up that hill because it was the first time I did it but um, Every part of me is shaking. Like I don't know if you can see my hand So I've been sitting here eating. I, I only brought one third of a protein bar with me but I also brought a cheese string and a pepperette and half of a G2 and a bottle of water and a bottle of frozen water. I usually freeze one and it acts as a, like, to keep everything cold. And then when it melts, I have an extra bottle of water. So that works out good. But uh, I'm really shaking badly. Like every part of my body, my stomach, my, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like I'm just shaking. So I don't know. I don't usually feel this way when I bike ride. I feel fine. So it's definitely that hill did something. It released some kind of chemical in me or I don't know. Someone who's athletic would know, but I don't know. So, um, cause all I eat for breakfast, I had a, my half a cup of yogurt and a quarter cup of blueberries and I had half of a protein shake uh, today. And now um, a few bites of a protein bar. So I guess I just didn't eat enough carbs today for bike riding and bike walking. So my poor bike, it's a heavy bike, it's like 30 pounds. So, uh, but it, it, like on wheels, you don't really feel the weight. And I'm, I don't have my panniers on it. I just have my basket and my 
my bike purse and my front basket. So, and I swapped out my pretty flower basket for this one. And I'm just, there's really not much in it right now, but I'm just testing it for my bike trip tomorrow uh, or, or sometime this week. I don't know for sure if I'm going to go tomorrow. I, I want to wait and see if the weather changes because um, it says it's supposed to drop to 10 degrees tomorrow night. And I really don't think that would be comfortable. 10 degrees Celsius won't be too comfortable in a tent, even with a sleeping bag. So I might wait a few more days. It's just that next week, it looks like it's going to have a lot of thunder and lightning. And I really do want to go on this trip, so... But I might be too exhausted after doing this. This is a very bad idea for the day before a bike packing tour. Although it's not etched in stone, I don't have to go tomorrow. I have the whole summer ahead of me. So uh, I just need two nice days in a row. But I really am not thinking it would be a pleasant experience to sleep in a tent when it's 10 degrees below. I'm uh, not below, I'm 10 above zero. So um, that's pretty cold. I mean, I get cold in the house and need my blanket and we have the house the house is well the heat's not on in the summer obviously but when it drops down to like 18 in the house i feel cold and i need my blanket so tan is going to be really cold so we'll see right now i could sleep in a snowbank i'm so hot <laughs> it's a really hot day but aren't these flowers beautiful and i don't know what they are they're just wild flowers but they're so pretty i know these are buttercups but i don't know what these purple and white ones are well lilac and white they're very pretty this is what the leaves look like and they're all over, they just lie on both sides of the uh, hill for quite a while and then when it gets into bush they're gone because I guess they need the sunlight. So it's just really lovely here. All right. Hi guys. So this I'm going to call the Bridge of Trails or the Trail of Brit no, Bridge of Trails. I think this is the fourth or fifth bridge I'm crossing and uh, if you're not like good with heights, this isn't the trail for you. And I'm not good with heights, but I'm okay on a bridge. I'm just not okay going up and down heights. <laughs> like, angles, <laughs> inclines, not good. I'm okay on flat. Like a bridge over a high place, I'm fine with. Especially this kind of a bridge. But uh, I still, it's really beautiful. I just wanted to show you. I'm just sorry it's so bumpy. I'm just going to come on this side of the trail. We're not supposed to be on this side of the trail, but I don't know if you can see down there. This is the way I've come. And this is the way I'm going. So it's just really lovely. And this um, bridge is higher than my head, and I'm five foot four, so it's maybe half an inch taller than me. So the bridge must be about five foot five. I just want to show you that. Now, now I'm on yet another bridge, and I think it's going over the same little creek that we passed over last time. So it's the same type of bridge. <sighs> it's really hot out. All right, guys, let's keep going. Okay, I made it out of the wooded section of the trail and I'm onto the street section of the trail. But there's still a dedicated bike path here, so I'll keep going. Okay, here's where I came from. Back this way. So, I made it up Third Line Hill without stopping or walking my bike. I just rode it. And now I am having a rest in a little kiosk that was set up for people who bike. It's got a roof for rain and I see right across the street, that's our highway, our main highway. Um, well, part of the main highway, the main highway kind of loops around. This is the section that heads out to Wawa and Thunder Bay. But I see a Tim Hortons and a Max. And I only have one more sip of my G2, but I do have water. I'm thinking I would like another G2 because this was not even a half a bottle. I should have taken a whole bottle. So I think I'm going to run into that Max Mart and see if they have any cold G2. And I don't know if they will or not because usually they just have the regular Gatorade and not the G2. But they might. I can. It won't hurt to check. I think I'm going to do that. So there's my bike. I'm just sitting here resting. Oh, that hill. I, I can't believe I didn't stop. I made it. I'm really thinking this trail would be nicer going the other way. I think the way I'm going, I'm going up all the hills. People coming the other way would be going down all the hills. Well, there were a few hills I had to walk down too. But all the rest was uphill. So maybe next time I'll loop around the other way. So, 
We'll see. All right. So I stopped at the Mike Smart and they had more GT to thank God and then a big bottle too. I also picked up some pork rinds. They don't taste great, but they're low carb and very high protein. Only one carb for nine pieces and seven grams of protein. So, yeah, I'm good to go. And that Tim Hortons looks really inviting. But I'm gonna keep going. Here I am, near the hospital. I guess I shouldn't do that, sorry. So, uh, these are our new, that's our new hospital in the distance there. And that's an old age home and I just came down this trail. And uh, the dedicated trail ends here. So it looks like it picks up again further on though. So I'll keep going. Woo! So glad that store had G2. I'm never going on a bike ride with only a little bit of G2 again because I definitely feel better when I'm drinking G2 instead of water. All right, I'll talk to you later. Hi guys, now I'm at the bike shop where I bought my bike. This is where it all started at Veleration in Sault Ste. Marie. They're closed today, but I'm just sitting in the shade over here, catching a breath from all the freaking hills. I uh, do not like this section of the Hub Trail, I gotta say. And actually, I got lost for a minute and I left the Hub Trail, but I got back on it. And I stopped here because they have some maps for free. And uh, so I took a map, so hopefully I can figure out where I'm going. But, um,. And here's some pictures on the back. We crossed that bridge earlier today. So, yeah. Just gonna catch my breath and then keep going. It's a really hot day and it's a very different ride when there's seven million hills as opposed to when it's nice and flat. And with my asthma, even though it's in better condition than it ever has been, since I was a kid, it's still too much doing hills on a bike for me. Um, it's not enjoyable at all. I did make it up the last three or four hills that I biked. I made it up the first hill. So it was just the middle section that I couldn't, the hills were too steep for me. And I can go down hills if they're like easier grade, if they're not steep or in the bush with lots of curves, I'm okay, like on a road. So I was able to go down a few hills too, but they weren't like really hills. They were just more like gentle inclines. But uh, they have camping back here. If people are coming from out of town, a lot of people come through on the Trans-Canada Highway and they camp in behind the store. And it's a good area because there's, there's a Michaels and a pet store and a Walmart right next door. And just out on the highway, there's all kinds of fast food places for people to eat and real restaurants too. Okay, I'm just going to take a break and look at this map. Okay, so I found the trail again. It goes down Great Northern Road. Down this huge hill. I don't like hills. I guess down is better than up. But I do not like going fast. Wish me luck. Talk to you at the bottom. So I made it past both highways. This is the last little mall before you leave town, and the last McDonald's before you leave town. So the end of the city is just right there. And the trail continues this way, so this is the way we'll go. Woo! This is quite the bike ride. All right. Okay, it looks like we're going back on a regular trail instead of on the roads. We just came out of this neighborhood here. And I'm not sure how far this part of the trail goes. Let's go see. This section of trail is nice and shaded and cool and pretty. And I think I'm going to take my helmet off for a little bit because I'm so hot. I'm going to just go slowly through here. Alright, we're back out on the road again. But there's still a dedicated trail, so that's good. I have no idea where I am. Let's find out.
Hey guys, I just stopped for lunch. I already took my uh, my pepperette and my cheese string out of the baggie, and I've got it sitting on some one ice bottle and one other bottle, so it's nice and cold. So I'm gonna eat the pepperette and the cheese now, and uh, I'm still working on my second G2, and I'm just sitting here. A big, big boat just came in, a really beautiful boat, and I'm just watching all the different boats on the river and really enjoying the sound of the waves and there's a bunch of seagulls over there and they will probably be over here if they can see that I'm eating so <laughs> but anyway I'm just gonna sit here I uh, lay down here for a second and I put this blanket under my neck because my neck gets really cold when I'm bike riding sometimes and drafty and it hurts so I really have to get well I ordered something on YouTube um, it's like a, a tube thing that you can wear around your neck and then pull it up over your head if you need to for, uh, to hide your hair if you get helmet head. So I'm looking forward to that coming in. And if it works, then once I see what it looks like, I'll be able to make more. So I'm just gonna sit here. We've been here before. So aren't those waves lovely? Can you hear them? They're almost gone. They're just from one, that big boat that went by. There they go. I just love that sound. So I've just got my bike parked by the bench. This is a dog walking spot. So sometimes I put my blanket down and sometimes I just sit on the bench, it depends. The day I think I'll just sit on the bench. I want something to lean against. So I'm gonna have my lunch now. I'll talk to you later. Such a gorgeous day and there are my goose friends on the river going for a swim. Here are a few of the slower ones. Very bright sunshine today. Can you hear them? And there's fish jumping. I don't know. One just jumped. I don't know if my camera caught it or not. They're just little minnows. Whoa! It's hard to walk here. I don't want to fall in. It's all potholy. No, I guess not potholes, just uneven ground. There's some pretty flowers down here, some daisies and some I don't know what those other white ones are. I ate my pepperoni, but I didn't have my cheese. Doesn't my bike look pretty? I washed it last week, shined it all up, oiled up my chain. Nice and shiny. My little townie. I love this bike. It looks funny with this black basket instead of my pretty flower basket. I guess I can crochet a big, a pretty thing to fit around this in nice colors but it, it holds so much more and I won't use it all the time but although it is very convenient this purse is meant to go here but because I have my basket here I put the purse closer to me and I really like having the purse here because I carry everything in here my my camera and my wallet and my uh, my phone and a screwdriver in case I have any repairs and my Ventolin in case I need it, and some Kleenex, and Lipsil, and just various other things. And this basket on the back is just fantastic. I really wish I could have found panniers that would fit while the basket was on there. Because that would be awesome. Because I really love that basket. But when I go camping tomorrow, I'm going to have to take the basket out and put the panniers. I don't know how to pronounce it. Like the saddlebags on. And um, then I have this that I can strap my my sleeping bag and tent to. And hopefully this cooler bag, because I do want to bring the cooler bag. And the cooler bag is even a little bit smaller than this bag, so I have to, I wish I could figure out a way to sew straps on the cooler bag, because I would just use the cooler bag here. But I don't know how to sew straps without sewing right through the cooler material and then ruining it, so. Anyway, 
We've just been lying on this bench reading, using my blankie as a neck pillow, and enjoying all the dogs that are going by. I've already done 20 kilometers so far, and they were 20 hard kilometers. At least 15 of them were hard, but only about five of them were flat. So it really makes a difference what kind of kilometers you do. I am a bit sore today. So I guess I should start heading back soon, but I think I'm gonna read for a little bit more. The sun's still pretty high. I've got lots of time before I need to get home. It is, let's see, it is, eight o'clock yeah eight o'clock it doesn't get dark till 9 30 so i'm good i'll be home before dark and if not i have lights and, and flashers on my bike i have these two this is a red flasher and this is a white one and then i have two in the front and i also have a headband that's really really bright that i could wear around my head um like a a light headband i'm not sure what they're called you know what i mean it's like a flashlight that you strap around your head all right Talk to you later. Guys, well, the sun is setting and it is 8.30, I believe. And the sun's already going down. So I guess the sun's just getting, going down earlier than usual. And it's only July. Like in June, the sun was staying up so much longer. <sighs> well, I just ate a mouthful of bugs, so I have to add that to my protein. Those tiny little midge kind of things that are all over the trail. They're just in that portion of the trail. And I forgot to turn my map, my ride back on. And I went from that bench all the way around the tip of the island to here before I remembered to turn my map, my ride back on. But that's okay. It's just about another, not very far. All right. Let's go home. Look at the cute dog. Look at this beautiful sunset. This is so pretty. Such a beautiful night, eh? I know, and I have to go back to the West End. I'm never going to make it before dark. No. <laughs> and I stop every three seconds to take pictures and videos, which doesn't help. That's right. No rush. So I almost had a bad accident. As I was riding, this branch got stuck in my sandal and won't come out. And it was going in my wheels. Like this was a much longer branch. Look at this. Now I'm behind the old hospitals. Hi. And the sun is setting. The lights are all coming on, on the pathway. But this part of the path, the path is lit up, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, so I've gone past the new hospitals and the old hospitals today. <sighs> and I feel okay now. It was just that first part in, through uh, Fort Creek that was hard. And that one hill after Fort Creek. That was hard, but I made it up. Well, there were a lot of hills that I made up, actually. I'm pretty impressed. So maybe after I lose another 60 pounds, I can make it up more hills, but I don't know, because I still do have asthma. So even though when I was like 18 years old, I couldn't make it up hills with my asthma and I was thin. So who knows, we'll see. So it's just absolutely a beautiful night, just gorgeous. And it smells so good out here. It smells so fresh and clean and nice. Alrighty, let's keep going. And now I'm behind the Bush Plain Museum. All the lights on the path are lit up. Um, here's a little bush plane, a water plane. This is the way I came behind me. And let's just roll forward a bit. Sorry, it's gonna be. There's a mural of a bush plane on the side of a thing. Sorry, I almost dropped my camera. So, um,. The birds that hang out here are just awesome. And they have a fake owl up on the corner of the roof and there's a seagull right next to it. They're not afraid at all. So there's seagulls and some other kind of seabird. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a tern. These little ones. Can you see the little ones flying with the seagull? But they make such a cool sound. But there's a million little tiny bugs and I think that's what they're hunting for. They're swooping down for. And I have to keep my mouth closed because they keep going in my mouth if I open my mouth at all. It's gross. And they go in my ears. But thankfully I'm wearing glasses so not my eyes. Alright, let's keep going. And I've got my light on, my bike, and I've got to turn this one on too. 
I can't figure out how to turn it on. I think I can't remember how to turn the light on this one. I thought it, yeah, okay, it's just in the middle. And I can turn it on flashers. And I'm not on the road yet, but I should still probably put my reflectors on too. So let's get off the bike and do that. Let's move the bike off the path a little bit. So I've got this one and I can do it steady beam or flashing. That should be good. And this is just another white one that I took off the front because, well, let me go in the front. You can't really see them because it's not that dark yet. But when the street lights and the, the trail lights come on, that's when I turn on my lights too. That way I don't forget. I just want to be safe. And I have an armband on. So, and if I need to, I have a, I have a light that I can strap around my head. All right. Let's say goodnight to the Bush Plain Museum and all the birds on the roof. <laughs> so now I'm, be, I'm by the library on my regular section of trail that goes by the waterfront. We're never usually here at night. And it's kind of a mess right now because as of uh, yesterday, there was a fairground here. With some rides for the kids and well I think this section was the band and the food and but this whole area was just all set up and all the way down that way was all set up so they're just I guess they haven't come for the garbage yet and there was a giant duck like I don't know how tall the duck was I took a picture but um yeah so it's kind of cool if it's really dark back here now but my camera's making everything brighter but you could see all the lights are on and we came down this way so now pretty soon we'll be by the river again, which is nice because I like riding by the river. All right, here we are back by the river, the St. Mary's River, and the art gallery is behind me. And uh, there's the city hall straight ahead. It's kind of dark now. And there's the International Bridge in the distance. So we're just gonna follow this trail. Keep going. Okay guys, now I'm behind the mall. There's the Galaxy Cinema. There's Sears. It's pretty dark. There's the International Bridge. There's this thing that you can sit in. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna keep going. And my lights are on. And they're much brighter now that it's darker. Especially this one. This looks like Star Wars things or Space Invaders from the old 80s games. Hey guys, so I'm coming to the end of the part of the trail that goes by the waterfront and um, I'll have to go on the road for about two blocks and then I'll be back on the normal trail that leads back to my house and I don't know whether I'll take any more videos after this because it's just going to be through neighborhoods. If I see anything interesting, I will. But if not, this will be it and thank you for coming on my uh, bike ride with me. So yeah, there's Sioux, Michigan. There's the American side of the bridge. The Canadian side's not lit up tonight. There's the rapids that generates all the power. And uh, my bike is right here. Can you see it at all? Here's my hand right in front of the camera. Can you see it? How about if I hold it up? Okay, if I hold it way up here, you could see it. But not here. So it's pretty darn dark. Here's the road I came on. You can see them all in the background. So I'm only a few kilometers from home. Um, I don't know how many, three, four, five, maybe. I'm not sure. So I'll talk to you later. Now I'm at the underpass that leads to the West End. If I were driving, I would go through there, but I don't want to go through there on my bike. This is the way I've come. And we're gonna finish going up the hub trail to almost where we started on it, and then turn left about where that car was crossing up ahead. And uh, here's the road behind me. And I'm doing all right, actually. So, yeah. Hi, guys. So there's my house across the street. Um, someone just shut off the light in the in the dining room. <laughs> As I took this, 
That's my mother. I see her in there. And, uh, yeah, so you can see how dark it is. And I just have to go across the street and put my bike in at the garage. And then I'm all set to go lie down and, well, first wash up, of course. So I made it. Yay, me. Okay. Talk to you later. Thank you for coming with me on this big, huge, long bike ride. That took me way longer than I thought it would.